Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I uh, thought I would uh, take a break from you know screwing in these terminal nuts, uh, these uh, set screws for terminal nuts. I wanted to talk about um, power density, right? It's a concept I think a lot of people don't really get and I think in comparison to energy density which is a little bit easier uh, to understand. So, uh, you know, I've, I've weighed these batteries before, measured their capacity, um, and these are uh, 800, um, sorry, uh, 900 watt hours uh, for the cell, so just short of one uh, kilowatt hour uh, for a single one of these cells. Uh, so, given the fact that they're in kilograms, about 5.2 to 5.3 kilograms, you, you can divide, and that's where you come up with the number that uh, like for these, I believe these are 170 um, watt hours per kilogram in terms of energy density, and that's the gravimetric energy density. Now you can also measure by volume to find out how much space these take up, uh, and then you can again do the same division and figure out, well, how many watt hours per liter or whatever measure of volume you're using. And that's one of the ways that people uh, will compare battery cells. Uh, but energy density is only one metric. And, uh, you know, you, there's a lot of balancing uh, that you have to do in terms of designing a an battery for an EV. Uh, and you see this across different manufacturers. And, uh, like, I know Tesla, of course, is famous for using uh, the 18650 cells that Tom Gage uh, first uh, did in his uh, uh, T0, um, AC propulsion T0, and, um, you know, Tesla basically stuck with that, right? Um, and to, they're, mo they're now modifying the cylindrical cell, uh, but it's basically the same thing that they've been using, uh, you know, since the early 2000s, uh, whereas this is the uh, rectangular prismatic cell. Basically, it's a self-contained cell, just like the cylindrical cell, only on a larger format. Uh, and then I brought this out too. This is the Nissan Leaf cell. And this is actually four cells, uh, two in series and then two, two groups in parallel. Um, or Yeah, two, two cells in parallel and then you link them together in series. But there are actually four individual cells inside of here. Those are uh, pouch cells, which need this exterior um, hardware to basically keep them from expanding and bursting, uh, catching fire, that sort of thing. Whereas uh, these come with the packaging. And so there's, you know, there's advantages um, and disadvantages to each. Uh, but the metric that I wanted to talk about is power density, because, uh, you know, I had mentioned C rate before, and I talked about C rate as I was uh, screwing in the battery terminals, and that's sort of one of those basic fundamental things you need to understand about a battery is, you know, how how much of its capacity um, in amp hours, how much how much current, how much amp can be pulled out of the cell, and most of them have a pulse discharge rating that's usually three or four C, but that's only for a few seconds but some have a much higher sustained output rate that they can, you know, they can handle outputting for a sustained period of time. And I know a lot of people, for whatever reason, got focused on temperature and thermal management, battery thermal management. But battery thermal management actually doesn't have a whole lot to do um, with overall power output or charging output, the, the things that... Uh, power density really sort of govern, right? So um, if you look at something like the Chevrolet Bolt EV's battery, uh, it has a uh, 3C discharge rate um, at least. So you should be able to uh, discharge at about 180 kilowatts. Now the motors are only 150 kilowatts, so you're well within that sort of power range for the battery. But if you look at the, the batteries and say the Chevrolet Volt, uh, those, you know, you have a 110, 111 kilowatt motor and you have a essentially 16 kilowatt hour battery that's able to power that at full capacity basically until the battery is dead. So, you, you know, you're looking at a, a significantly uh, higher C rate, a, a little over a 6 C discharge rate. Uh, and, and that's because even though the Volt also uses pouch cells like the Bolt EV. 
they're much more similar to the pouch cells in this Nissan Leaf that are very thin. And that's, that's kind of what I was getting to is everybody likes to um, claim that like cylindrical cells are superior in terms of, uh, you know, cooling and whatnot, but that's not the reason. The reason they have a higher power density uh, is because they have a thinner electrode. There's less distance for the uh, electrons to travel, uh, and that allows uh, for higher power both in and out. That's why it's common to see these cylindrical cells uh, with 10C ratings. And that's basically the, the difference, right, between uh, these different cells is just in terms of how thick their electrodes are, how quickly. And like this Nissan Leaf, uh, even though, again, it's four cells, uh, but this this cell group here, be just based on the power from the Nissan Leaf alone, uh, should be able to output uh, close to 200 amps out of what was when it's fresh and new, only maybe a 60 amp hour um, cell group. So uh, it's a very, very high um, C rate, and that governs this sort of power density um, and what can really be achieved uh, in terms of output power. Uh, and, and so how, how it kind of works, right? If you look at the math, this isn't a Tesla cell. This is actually a much lower um, energy density cell. This is, I, th I believe, a, a 2200 uh, milliamp hour or 2.2 amp hour. But if you take that times the, you know, the nominal voltage, you can kind of get the capacity uh, there. So this is, is just, this is under a 10 watt hour uh, per cell, I believe the Tesla cells can, like the 2170 cells, I think are, are 15, uh, 14 or 15 watt hours, maybe as much as 17, 18, 18 watt hours per individual cell. Uh, so that's tiny in terms of the 900 watt hours that are in here, right? But um, in terms of the power density, yes, this cell is capable on its own of again outputting close to one kilowatt by itself, uh, whereas this cell couldn't output that much. But imagine this many cells, you know, probably three, four across, three, four high, however many deep you can package to make a much higher power density cell. And given that this cell on an individual cell level should have a discharge uh, current and a charge current of somewhere between 5 and 10 C. Um, it, it gives you the opportunity uh, to create a lot more power in a much smaller package. Uh, and so how, how that will play out in the real world, right? Um, with these Ford Ranger electrics, I, like I said, I think one of the problems some past Ford Ranger electric uh, conversions have had is not using a battery with the, su the sufficient power density to power the motor, right? So uh, the Ford Ranger Electric has a basically a 90 kilowatt peak power motor based on the, the limitations of the controller, right? It has a voltage limit of 380 volts. So it, it can uh, output a maximum of 90 kilowatts. But people using these 100 uh, amp hour, not, not these particular ones, but the uh, lithium iron phosphate cells, those 100 amp hour cells, if they're only capable of a sustained uh, 100 amps of output current, and you're using those in a battery that can be t pulling upwards of 250 amps or maybe almost 300 amp uh, is what I've heard uh, the regenerative braking system might be able to produce, you're going to you know outstrip uh, that battery. Now I know uh, some people have done Ford Ranger electric updates with these uh, 18650 cells um, and you know that's kind of a different problem right where you can get 75 kilowatt hours of those uh, Tesla model uh, S cells in there um, but there's not enough room for 14 more of those modules so you can't do 150 kilowatt hour but you can do 75 kilowatt hour but even at 75 kilowatt hour it has more than enough power output um, i think close to at 75 kilowatt hours it, it easily uh, um, can output uh, i believe it was like six times that uh, so you, you you know you're looking at a massive amount of of horsepower uh, that you can support or uh, kilowatt that you can support at the motor level 
um, that a you know lithium iron phosphate battery just couldn't. And that's something that's going to be uh, really important to consider um, in those builds. And I should say uh, a lithium iron phosphate uh, battery of, you know, with this thickness of electrode, uh, this size of a cell. They do make lithium iron phosphate cells that are smaller, um, and they, they, they actually have a much higher C rate again because of the smaller, thinner electrodes. Um, but when you're using these larger format cells, uh, I think you have to be really, really careful. And, you know, while um, some people might want to do a conversion with a high-powered electric motor, right, you're finally able to, you know, get 150, 180, 200 kilowatt uh, motors. I think even a, the Magna is doing that E-beam truck conversion kit for OEMs um, that has up to like a 220 kilowatt motor. Well, if you're going to do that, you have to be able to pair it with a battery that's actually capable of outputting that much power. Uh, and that can actually be quite a challenge. So it's one of those other considerations that I don't think it's talked over a lot. Um, and, and I kind of sum it up when you're, when you're weighing the pros and cons of different batteries and different battery technologies is, you know, you can have energy dense, you can have power dense, or you can have cheap choose any two, right? You can't have all three um, in the same packaging, right? In the same battery, uh, because one, something's got to give. So if you're gonna put a more expensive power dense battery in something like the Audi e-tron or the Porsche Taycan, you can do that even if they're in pouch cell format. Um, or even the Chevrolet Volt had a, has a very expensive battery, um, even though it's a significantly smaller battery than what's in the Chevrolet Bolt EV which is a 1C battery, high in energy dense, as energy dense as the uh, Tesla model uh, 32170 uh, battery, but it's nowhere near as power dense. But where you went out is you get it for a 30% discount over the equivalent size Tesla Model 3 2170 battery. So everything sort of has its trade-offs. Of course, uh, technology is moving uh, forward, but... Um, you know, what you can get today cheaply is maybe going to be more powerful and more energy dense than what would have been the most expensive batteries 20 years ago, like what was put in the first Tesla Roadsters. But um, relative, you're going to have to give up something on that three axes, um, whether it be power density, energy density, uh, or, or cost, right? Just overall cost of the battery. Um, on a per kilowatt hour basis or however you want to mention it, you know, measure it. So I just wanted to, um, yeah, I just wanted to go through that, just kind of explain, uh, and this is sort of going into, um, you know, my, my thinking in terms of how I'm sizing the battery, uh, for the Ford Ranger electric, you know, outside of NIM and, uh, lead acid, which were actually very power dense despite their heavy weight, um, you know, there weren't a lot of budget options that I feel like had the um, power density required uh, to run the Ford Ranger Electric at its peak, um, you know, peak capacity. And this is also informing me if I do decide to do future uh, either electric vehicle upgrades or electric vehicle conversions. Um, this This mindset is kind of helping me shape how that battery is going to have to look uh, leading into that sort of design phase of the electric vehicle. So anyway, I don't know if you found this interesting, if this is something that you knew about. Um, I, I feel like there are a lot of battery experts uh, who are basically being silent right now, and they're not really commenting on some of, uh, I think, uh, some of the incorrect information uh, that's being spread around uh, you know, specifically trying to favor particular brands or particular um, automakers, maybe by the people who are invested in those automakers. But um, unfortunately, like I said, I don't feel like enough battery experts are actually uh, discussing this in depth or talking about this uh, in depth. And I, I, I wish there would be a little bit more fact checking. Like I said, I think that thermal management argument as um, a reason for uh, 
lower power density or lower charging speeds i think that misled a lot of people so like i said i'd love to i'd love to hear from more experts on this field who would care to talk about things like power density power outputs c ratings and and maybe specifically how they apply to electric vehicles um yeah if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe it really helps out the channel and uh thank you for watching